Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here, and this is the Astrological Winds channel, and we're going to take a look at the astrological weather forecast for the week of November 23rd through the 29th, 30th, a little bit even, going into um, next Sunday night, early Monday morning, and when we have the first of our eclipses for the uh, first eclipse season. So, um, that's the big thing of the week. It's actually next Sunday night, late, early Monday morning. We have an eclipse, full moon in Gemini, lunar eclipse at nine degrees Gemini. Also this week, Neptune joins the planets that are going direct. So, um, those are really the two biggest things of the week, but there's some interesting energy at the beginning of the week that really is just very fitting for the times that we're going through, especially in the United States and the uh, Western world. And, um, and um, I think a lot of it is still the residual stuff of what's going on with a lot of the relationship issues that have been going on since all the Scorpio energy kicked in led by the Mercury retrograde through Scorpio. And we're still just about out of that shadow period of that now. Um, and, and really coming to terms with the, the end of that. Mercury is near, nearing the end of the Scorpio degrees these days. But anyway, so kind of interesting. It's Thanksgiving week in the United States. And... Um, a week when there's a lot of travel, the most travel usually of the year, um, very, very family oriented and in a very American holiday. And it has crashed into the shores of the pandemic, the COVID virus pandemic and the situations and reactions to that that have occurred in the society and, and, and for, you know, like that of course is also affecting all of the rest of the world too. Um, but in particular this week being a sensitive week for the United States psyche in that it is Thanksgiving week and it's a very family oriented week. And here we have this, this virus really, um, stopping doing a lot of the things we would normally do, which in includes basically travel and entertainment, which is what really, you know, holidays are all about. So, so I think, um, once again, we're seeing how the effects of the, w the astrology of the world does filter down into our individual lives and affect us too, no matter what our transits are. Um, and so the beginning of this week, I think, is really going to be coming to terms with the disappointment of not being able to have that normal family connection, that normal holiday connection, the ability to travel as you would like, um, will really kind of hit home. And there's several bumpy kind of aspects for the first three days of this week that kind of relate to that energy that um, just not being able to make the connections you normally do. So that can be really frustrating and um, really irritating and, and upsetting emotionally inside. And, and yet there's really nowhere to go with it because all of our family, all of people are feeling that same thing. So it's like something we have to like process inside ourselves more than anything else. There, there's really no one who's, you know, going to have a solution or a bomb or a solve for this, for this wound and this pain that we're feeling of this separation energy and the inability to move about and connect as we normally would. So on Monday, Today, there is actually a couple like nicer um, aspects in the sense of appealing to our 
ideals. And the first one is really nice is Mercury is trining Neptune. And on top of that, we have Venus is sesquadrating Neptune. So, you know, basically you have like, the imagination is working really well today. There's a richness to our mind that's being driven by our ideals, um, being driven by like what is inspiring us right now. So we can easily get into like our spiritual or mystical or religious paths today and feel really at harmony with that um, or use that energy to study those things or get into a contemplative or meditative mind and, and also the ability to um, express ourselves well with words eloquently, um, artistically, creatively. So it's good for creative writing, things like that. And the, and the Venus thing brings in idealism in our relationships and we can really you know we can capture some beautiful moments in our day under these influences but, but what we're going to see especially with the venus neptune thing is some dissatisfaction in relationships because we can't get them to live up to the way we would ideally like to see so there's our first aspect showing that you know ideally we would like to maybe be traveling and going to see our family this week but we can't do that possibly because of the restrictions on us so so i mean that's just one manifestation of the way our ideals and relationships can be let down or frustrated under the sesa quadrate of the venus neptune but it's still not a really hard, hard, challenging aspect. It's just kind of like, like I said, a little bit of the, some disappointments inside when it comes to relationships. And some of that may be just having to say goodbye, you know, like separations that are like, okay, we have to say goodbye now, you know, it's like, I will be seeing you again at some other time. Um, also on Monday, the Sun Square series, the main asteroid, of the um, four main asteroid of the asteroid belt, one of the main four asteroids, and the one representing the motherly or nurturing archetype. And, and here again, it's another aspect showing that we have to sacrifice certain things to help or be able to nurture others, and it may require our own self-sacrifice, our own ability to do some of the things we want to do, or we may find that we're not able to tap into the resources we normally have and get the care and the nurturing that we normally have. So once again, you can see how this aspect can fit into the inability to connect with our families physically during this holiday week. Um, Tuesday is pretty quiet, but then Wednesday, which is the day right before Thanksgiving when most people actually do travel. It's one of the most well-traveled days. There's three very frustrating aspects that once again tie right into the inability to come together with others like we normally do. And in, in, in this case, our family, which is a very close-knit group. But what we've got going on is Venus, the planet of relationships, is Sessi Quadre, another tough, challenging aspect, the North Node. And the North Node is a lot to do with coming together as groups and sharing things. So, you know, Venus is all about our closer, a lot of our closer relationships, people we feel a lot of love for. So we're being frustrated and we're not able to connect with those people like we normally do. And at the same time, Mercury is quincunxing the North Node and Mercury is all about the travel and communication. And the quincunx is the aspect of complete disconnection. So here we have travel, communication, 
the things we normally do to get there to our place during these holidays, and we have a complete disconnection from the group. It's a separation aspect. It's having to adjust to a new reality that we didn't have to deal with before. So it can be a tough one, and it can, this one can be on the mind. And, and to top that off, Mercury assess a quadrate Chiron too, and that shows how the mind is, is chewing. It's chewing on the things that bother it. And so there's this loop of like being caught in a loop of like your own pain because you keep, you know, dwelling on the negative aspects of what's going on. So Mercury Sessa Quadre Chiron is like, come on, move beyond this, but it's very difficult to. Our mind and our ego are very close together and wrapped up together, and it's very difficult for the mind to accept what's going on that day. Then we get to Thursday, um, which is Thanksgiving Day, and, um, and you know, there's a couple interesting aspects that day that show, you know, we can still find ways to feel um, okay and whole during this thing. And the first one is the sun trining Chiron. And, and I think what this will do is like the spirit of the thankfulness of that day will still come through into our lives and beings and we'll reach out to others in any way that we can, whether that's, you know, the telephone or um, just people that we normally wouldn't be maybe spending the holiday with or people that are local, just getting like helping each one, each other out so that there's some like kind of medicine for the pain of separation that we're feeling and going through. And, and, and we can learn something about this too. We can learn something that maybe before to us was hidden in our personality and we can bring it out and um, let it shine. And with and Mercury that day is conjunct Juno, which is the asteroid that represents the partner or the wife or the a significant other, the female archetype of, of the um, partner or wife. And, and this shows that we, you know, can reach out and still create different partnerships. Or if we choose, we can dwell on the broken partnerships that have occurred. So like that, that being a conjunction can be a two way street and it, and it can be, and we can go back and forth too. We can go back and forth under a conjunction in the same period that it's influencing. So we can maybe create some new partnerships on one level and yet we're suffering from a separation on another level. So that's Thanksgiving day. Um, the day after Thanksgiving is an interesting one, mainly because we have a Venus opposite Uranus. So, um, that's pretty interesting because, um, it's Venus Uranus, like I've said this before, I think when we've had a uh, Venus Uranus aspects, especially harder ones, like the um, opposition on this one. And, um, you know, for relationships that have, you know, been, you know, together for a long time, uh, you know, long-term relationships, Venus Uranus can be difficult. Um, it, it, things come up that can be upsetting and they can come up quickly and they may have to be dealt with rapidly. And sometimes, you know, with, with the opposition, it's going to force us into making some kind of quick decision about certain relationships. You may decide that, especially with Uranus, that there are certain people that are just too upsetting to your world and just throw your world upside down when they're in it and that your decision is going to be to separate yourself from them, to give yourself more freedom from them or to rebel against the way they somehow control or restrict you when they're in your space. So it's kind of interesting on the level of when you think about all the Scorpio energy that's been going on and the relationship issues that have been going on since mid-October, 
this could be the type of one where it's like the final straw for a lot of people where, you know, just somebody's overreaction or your overreaction just is the final break and, and the separation that occurs. So, um, but then the other way this can work is with people that you don't know as well, or people you may even meet that day that, um, you can have some really exciting, stimulating connections with them. Um, usually short term, usually unstable, um, usually blast of a idea or an experience that is, um, really can give a lot of insight and perception in a short period of time, a lot of excitement in your life. So, um, you know, it's something that you can do something different to do, do. And, and, you know, it's interesting cause that's the day after Thanksgiving, which once again in the U S is, um, a day where a lot of people go shopping and yet like that slowly over the years has been taken over by like more of an internet shopping experience. And here we have Uranus, which is all about um, technology, the internet, and things like that. And Venus is our money. So many people, you know, instead of going to the malls, which, you know, would be the old way of doing things, or we're buying more and more online. And with the virus and the restrictions, that may, you know, really be a day where you see that really take off. So, and, you know, people can spend money with a Venus Uranus thing very um, impulsively, um, may not really think about it and may overspend money or buy things that, you know, don't really have, don't maintain an interest for very long. So that's kind of interesting. And also the last thing about the Venus Uranus is it can get you into like different odd expressions of art, different types of art, um, and just either expressing that yourself or getting into it yourself. Um, the other thing happening on Friday also is there's a Mercury um, is sextiling Pluto. And that's just like a lot of like what we've been really going through for over a month. Just the mind really contemplating deeply the insights we've gotten and really having this research investigative type of mind that wants to get to the bottom of everything. Um, is very analytical, um, is not afraid to look into the shadow or dark side of things and take things from that, learn from it, reform things. So, um, and that's a, definitely an interesting one that you can work with there. Um, Saturday is the day Neptune goes direct. So this is, this is one of the bigger things of the week. <clears throat> and it's interesting, you know, Neptune's been retrograde for five months and when it goes direct like just like Pluto and Uranus it's pretty subtle you know it's a background 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 energy and, and Mercury has a lot to do with energies of like you know other worlds non-physical worlds so it's even more subtle in a way in that sense and it's strong in Pisces too, you know, it's like that's the sign that it, it's most like and it's been in Pisces for several years now and will continue to be for several more years. Um, so, you know, the thought that really had come to my mind with this Neptune Direct is like, I think we're all going to have to take a look at the way we've been fooling ourselves. And... You know, the three outer planets have a lot to do or have, have not a lot, but have to do with transpersonal things, with, with things that, you know, are collective and mystical or, or spiritual or from another level of energy that's beyond the physical that is influencing the physical to move or evolutionize in a certain direction. And... You know, Pisces can be like, and Neptune can be like very, very delusional and self-delusional. We can be kidding ourselves about a lot of things. And when, and when we're like that, when we're in that receptive zone like that, 
it's easy for other people to influence us too. To get us like lost in a rabbit hole of what's going on. And when you think about the last five months and what's been going on collectively and the way people react to that, it seems like everybody's kind of lost in a rabbit hole. Um, so maybe as Neptune goes direct, we're gonna start to face that and ask ourselves, how have I misled myself? How have I allowed others to mislead me? How have I allowed collective or group energy that's going on to influence me and allow me to be misled? You know, Neptune makes the perfect followers. <clears throat> and, um, and for many of you who are older, you know, Jim Jones had a lot of perfect followers that he took down to Guyana many years ago, and we know what ended up happening to them. Neptune can make us very impressionable. People are really good at appealing to our ideals, leaving us little clues out there that are not factual, but are idealistic ideas that they would like to see us turn into our reality. And I think this Neptune Direct for the next seven months or so is gonna be asking us to discern what is really going on? Are we creating our own realities that are actually just following what let's call the masters or puppet masters or whoever who would, would want to have some control in our lives to kind of follow their path, their ideals? by appealing to the ideals that you have and creating these imaginary worlds that you can plug into and that appeals to your ideal and makes you feel really good. You're right, like all these other people feel the same way. But what if you're all being misled? What if it's all just an imaginary game that we're creating ourselves? So I think the Neptune Direct in Pisces is going to ask us that. Like, where are we creating what we think is an ideal reality and actually just misleading ourselves and everybody else on the ride? And where can we really work on putting our ideals in action? Where can we really do this? I think we've got some interesting times ahead. Um, Sunday is a bumpy day. Um, we got the sun, quincunx Uranus, and the sun, semi-square Pluto. And I can't help but think what most likely is going to occur during that energy next weekend is that we're going to be challenged by situations and circumstances and the people around us and especially those who have authority of any type around us probably get into some really frustrating and resentful feelings maybe some power struggles manipulation propaganda games coercion things like that that would be that sun pluto and that frustration that irritation is going to fire off the sun uranus quincunx and kind of be like okay i'm done with this and i'm done with you um sun uranus quincunx is just a really jagged way of breaking free of your restrictions where you've just basically had enough it doesn't matter if you break the window on your way out um you're getting out and and so there's this real push to like be kind of be rebellious and edgy and just flipping about the way you are towards these people or authorities or circumstances that are making you feel that way. So it's a very, very jagged energy. And once again, you can get a lot of like great insights and perceptions from that sun Uranus, but you know, they're, they come quick they go quick. 
Um, they can be brilliant, but not well detailed. Um, so, you know, there's some valuable information in there, but it is going to be a jagged energy that day. Okay, and then that night, late that night, early in the morning on Monday is our first eclipse of the second eclipse season of this year. And we had some pretty heavy ones in June, and we had some pretty heavy ones last winter that really, you know, you know, eclipses, like I've said before, are turning points. They are like, um, in many ways, they can be very Uranus-like, where suddenly our reality completely changes. So the way I like the analogy, and you may have heard me say this before, with the eclipse, it's kind of like, you know, you're walking down the streets of a city. Like, you're walking, like, if you've been to New York, walking down one of the avenues, and you're just walking north or south, 7th Ave, 5th Ave, or something. And all of a sudden, after walking for, like, what, 20 minutes in one direction, you make a right or a left onto one of the streets. So it's like a complete turn in another direction. And eclipses can be like that. And, and eclipses are interesting, too, on a personal level. You know, many eclipses may go by and you don't feel a thing in your personal life very much. And then there's other eclipses that come and just boom. You know, they're the most, light, one of the most life-changing experiences that you could possibly have. And a lot of that has to do with how the eclipse is hitting your personal chart, what kind of eclipse they are, the strength of the eclipse. So this, this eclipse is a full moon. So it's a lunar eclipse, not a solar eclipse. It's a lunar eclipse. It's a full moon in Gemini at nine degrees. And the eclipse is not making any other aspects to any planet but the sun. So the moon is opposite the sun in a full moon. So the full moon, Gemini, the sun and Sag, you know, opposite one another, and they are on the information knowledge axis. And it's a lunar eclipse, and it's a partial lunar eclipse, and it's a very partial lunar eclipse. It's barely visible in the places where it is visible in the world. And so it doesn't make it a very strong eclipse, in all honesty. Um, you know, it may not be much stronger than your normal full moon in energy unless you have planets in the 8, 9, 10 degree of mutable signs zone. And, and the other thing is it's a lunar eclipse. So lunar eclipses don't necessarily and most of the times do not really come to us in outer events or external events. It's more something we feel inside ourselves. And so with the, and, 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 and so like, like I said, it's not going to be the most powerful eclipse or full moon or eclipse as far as like making big changes in our world or in the external world. Um, you know, there's definitely some things that can be, especially things that are around that 8, 9, 10 degree mutable that can trigger events. But we're going to mainly be feeling it inside. And I really think, you know, what the, you know, the full moon shines a light on things and, and, and really helps us see it in its brightest context. And with the moon in Gemini, the sun in Sag, it's all about information. And our North Node went into Gemini last year, and I said, I think during this 18-month period of when the North Node is in Gemini, the South Node is in Sagittarius, we're looking at how we've been misled by our leaders, those are the Sag people, about the information they're giving us. And all this information, I mean, Gemini you know, is so much taking information from so many places, jumping from one place to another, which is really our world these days. It's an overstimulation of mental and intellectual knowledge and information. And it's fired to us by the internet and all the electronic devices that we have sharing this information. And I said, you know, really the North Node there is, you know, for us to discern what 
this information, what's valuable in it, what's true in it. And, and that Neptune going direct even really is going to like, you know, really help us once again see that. So so that's what this is all about. I mean, you know, the, the issue with Sag and Gemini in their information collection is they're constantly expanding, constantly taking more in, and they don't really stop to really get into the depth of what they're taking in. So they, they miss a lot of salient points, a lot of important and vital information, um, mainly because with Gemini's case, they're just jumping from one thing to another and, and kind of staying on the surface of things. And in Sag's case, they're just running off to the next thing on the horizon. And so like both of these things are, you know, they're showing us we really need to like bring back some of this stuff, this information, this input we're getting into our minds and really try to figure out what's valuable and what's not, what's going to help us evolutionize and gain more wisdom rather than just more information and, and get out of just this curiosity mind and get into things with more depth. And it's interesting because the, the ruler of the full moon is Mercury. And Mercury is at it's in the late degrees of Scorpio. And that's that mind that the Scorpio energy is looking into things deeper, looking into the depth of things, really seeing how things, you know, work and are influenced by the energies and the thoughts and the intentions and the stuff behind that. So so here we have Mercury, you know, in Scorpio, and it's been in Scorpio a long time, since October, early October, to really contemplate this stuff on a deeper level. And being the ruler of the full moon, it's sextiling Pluto and Jupiter and the palace and even Saturn, the whole four planets that are out there at the end of Capricorn are being sextiled by Mercury. So there's an opportunity here to really be able to do this, to use the, the, the um, precision of Saturn, the depth in, of Pluto, the purpose of Pallas Athene, to really organize those ideals and the, and the plans and things that Jupiter wants to do. <clears throat> so we have that opportunity with this full moon. And so for people who, you know, look at your chart and, and look to the house that Gemini nine degrees is in and on the opposite side of your chart, you'll find where Sagittarius nine degrees is. And those are the two houses that are going to be most affected by this full moon and, and eclipse. And that's where you're going to really feel a lot of this stuff, especially internally. So like, you know, if it's in your like 10th house and fourth house, it's going to be stuff, information, knowledge about what's going on in your public career life versus your home and family life and so on. And for those of you who have planets or points, like, you know, rising, mid-heaven, part of fortune, things like that, um, in your um, chart, you guys are the ones who are going to probably feel it more, and you may get some external events. So if you have any planets in that 8, 9, 10 degree of mutable signs, Gemini, Sagittarius, of course, are both mutable, and then Pisces and Virgo, are the other two mutable signs. So if you have planets or points in eight, nine, 10 degrees of those four signs, you guys may actually get some external events that really can change the path of your life. All right, um, that is our forecast for this week and the last, really the last week in November. So next week, We'll not only do the weekly, but we'll look at the month of December. And this is the month of the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter at one degree Aquarius. They're going to go into air signs. 
the conjunctions after 200 plus years of mainly being in earth signs, we're going into air signs, right in the middle of the transition of the birth of the age of Aquarius from the age of Pisces. We're like kind of right in the middle of the cusp of it. It's been probably cusping for about 100 years now. Got another 100 years to go. This is really going to be a real big launching point and hop happening on the solstice. So that'll be a really interesting solstice chart to do in a few weeks. Um, so the blog is not only available on YouTube channel and please become a follower just below. You can become a follower and then you'll always know when it comes up. But I am also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Just do a search under Astrological Winds channel. Um, Classes are going. There are three classes available for beginning astrology. There's an intro class that includes a history of astrology. There is a class on the elements and modes. And now there's a class on the three or the four cardinal signs. So if you're an Aries or a Cancer or a Libra or um, a Capricorn, and you'd like to know more about your signs, you know, those classes are available as one-off classes, as like basically just a lecture for your own information, or if you'd really like to learn astrology, you can follow them one sequentially, one to the next. So the, the fixed sign class will probably be up by the end of the week. Right now they're available only on Dropbox, so you need my permission to get it. It is $25 for a class unless you are a student and you have a valid student ID. Um, and that is a student who's either under 25 years old or over 65. Um, other, and you get $5 off if you're a student. It would be $20 and just pay me through PayPal or Zelly. Um, and I will get them and my website redone soon. Um, readings. Um, all kinds of readings available, um, natal chart, your predictive reading for the year, um, elections if you need the best timing to start an event, horary questions if you have a real itchy yes or no question that you need to have an answer to, children's charts, you want to look at that, and then relationship charts, you know, that's always one of the big ones too, um, if you want to look at a new relationship or a relationship that's been going on for a while, um, available for them too. And my email is M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com. And it's a free service. Please pass the link on to anyone that you think would be interested in. And really um, thankful for anyone who has, getting a lot of new followers uh, new clients, and I really appreciate that. And um, thanks for all the positive feedback. Let's continue to let it grow. And let's look at that Neptune all together for the next seven months and try to figure out where we're allowing ourselves to be fooled because we're allowing others to use our ideals to mislead us. Let's make sure we're solid with where we're going. I think that is a good assignment for all of us. All right, until next week, this is Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Winds Channel. And enjoy your Thanksgiving if you're in the United States, um, despite the hard circumstances that we're under. Have a happy Thanksgiving. There's a lot to be thankful for. Life is a beautiful thing. All you have to do is change your perspective. And you will see that too.